Hello, this is the Section 5.1b lesson. In Section 5.1a, we asked ourselves four questions about multiplying fractions. First of all, why would we multiply fractions? Uh, second, how do we multiply fractions? Third, why does this method work? And then the fourth is when do we multiply fractions? 5.1a, we answered these first three questions. Uh, in this section, we're going to focus on the last question. When do we multiply fractions? So just to briefly refresh our memory, let's talk about a couple of these questions. First question, why would we multiply fractions? And the answer is, well, we would multiply fractions if we are doing something with a fraction of a fraction. So one example that we worked in Section 5.1a is to find a quarter of one-third of a cup of water. So we see in this example we're doing something with a fraction of a fraction. And so to solve this we can just take one-fourth times one-third. And then we do that arithmetic and we're all done. Okay? So we multiply if we're doing something with a fraction of a fraction. Next question is, well how do we multiply? Well remember the algorithm is very simple. We simply multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we're all done. Now the fourth question is, when do we multiply? Well, we're going to illustrate uh, how to answer that question with several examples. And in all these examples, we're going to draw a lot of pictures. Uh, pictures are going to help us to, to justify that this problem is solved by multiplication of fractions or not. So here in this example, Martin has two-thirds of a glass of lemonade. Kayla drinks one-fourth of the lemonade in the glass. What fraction of a glass of lemonade did Kayla drink? So let's start off by drawing a picture of this scenario. So we're told that Martin has two-thirds of a glass of lemonade. Well, let's, let's draw a picture of that two-thirds of a glass. So the hole for this uh, fraction is a glass of lemonade. So here's a whole glass. Now we're told that Martin has two-thirds of a glass. So let's divide this glass up into three pieces and uh, Martin has two of those pieces. Okay. So there's the two-thirds of a glass that, that Martin has. Now Kayla is going to drink a quarter of the lemonade in the glass. So what does that mean? Well that means that we're going to take this lemonade in the glass and we're going to break this up into four pieces by drawing three vertical lines and then Kayla is going to drink one of those pieces. So right here is the lemonade that Kayla is going to drink. Now the question is what fraction of a glass of lemonade did Kayla drink? Well to answer that question we are going to just extend these lines on out like this. And so we see from the picture that uh, Kayla drank two pieces and our entire glass is broken up into 12 pieces. So we can see right away that the answer is going to be 2 twelfths, which of course can be um, simplified down to 1 sixth. Okay. So there's our answer. We can tell that from the picture. Now also if we look at the picture, we see that we did something with a quarter of this 2 thirds. And so the picture here helps us to justify that we could have solved this problem by simply taking 1 fourth times two-thirds. We did something with a quarter of that two-thirds and the picture helps justify that. So mathematically we could just calculate one-fourth times two-thirds and we do that arithmetic we're going to get two-twelfths which again can be simplified down to one-sixth of a glass. Okay. So there we go. There's our answer. The picture helps justify that this really is solved by multiplication. On the picture, we could have just seen that the answer was 1 6 without actually doing the arithmetic. But again, the picture helps justify that this really is solved by multiplication of fractions. I also got another example dealing with a pan of brownies. So a pan of brownies was cut into pieces of equal size. There are three brownies left. David eats half of them. How many brownies did David eat? So let's draw a picture here. So we start off with a pan of brownies. So let's draw a big box here to represent our whole pan. 
and was cut into pieces of equal size. Now we're not told how many pieces the pan was cut into, but it does say that there are three brownies left. So let's draw in three remaining brownies. Now I don't know how big those brownies are, but let's just say it maybe looks like this. Okay. So there's my three pieces that, my three brownies that are left. Now we're told that David eats half of them. Well, let's, so that means we're going to cut those brownies into half, or all those, those three brownies in, into two equal pieces, and we're going to eat one of those pieces. And so, so there's, there's a picture. Now from the picture we see that we did something with a half of those three brownies. And so mathematically we could solve this by taking one half times three. And then to do this arithmetic we can think of this as one half times three over one. And then we do this arithmetic, this is going to be three halves, which is equal to one and a half brownies. Okay. So there's my answer, we ate one and a half brownies. Now from the picture we could have seen that that was the answer. And again, our picture justifies that this is indeed solved by multiplication of fractions because we did something with a half of those three brownies. Now this next example at first glance looks very, very, or looks identical to the first uh, previous example, but um, we see there's a slight difference and we got to be very careful when we read these word problems. We have to read every word very carefully and think about the problem and don't jump to any conclusions. So a pan of brownies was cut into pieces of equal size. There are three brownies left. David eats half of them. What fraction of the pan of brownies did David eat? Well, let's draw a picture here. We start off with our same pan of brownies that we had in the previous problem. Cut into brownies of equal size, or pieces of equal size. Again, we don't know how many pieces there are, but we know there are three brownies left. So there's my three brownies that are left. David eats half of them, so let's take those three pieces, divide them into two pieces, and we're going to eat one of those pieces. And so there, there's the brownies that he ate. But now the question is, what fraction of the pan of brownies did David eat? Well, we know that he ate one and a half brownies, but we don't want to know how many brownies he ate. We want to know what fraction of the pan. Well, the problem here is that I don't know how big these three pieces that were left are. Um, we, in other words, we don't know what was up here. We don't know how many brownies were up here. And uh, so, in other words, we just don't have enough information to solve this problem. Not enough information. We know they ate one and a half brownies, but we don't know what fraction of the entire pan this is. So, this problem, there just isn't enough information to solve. Now, our last three examples are, again, going to illustrate the fact that we've got to read word problems very, very carefully. Two problems that may look identical at first glance may not be identical. So, you're baking brownies for your class. You put white frosting on a third of the brownies, but then you put small red hearts on a half of the brownies that have white frosting on them. What fraction of the brownies have both white frosting and small red hearts on them? So let's, let's draw a picture here. We start off with a pan of brownies. So let's draw a big box here to represent our pan of brownies. Uh, then it says you put white frosting on a third of them. So let's divide our pan up into three equal pieces. And we're going to put white frosting on one of those pieces. So there's my brownies with white frosting. Then it says you put small red hearts on a half of the brownies that have white frosting on them. So we're going to take this piece that has white frosting and we're going to divide that up into two equal pieces. And we're going to put red hearts on one of those pieces. So there's my brownies with red hearts. And so now the question is what fraction of the brownies have both white frosting and small red hearts on them? Well. To answer that question, let's extend this line on out a little bit. And so from the picture here, we see that um, we've got our whole pan that's broken up into now six pieces. And on one of those pieces, we have both white frosting and red hearts. 
So from, from the picture, we can see that our answer is going to be 1 sixth. Well, mathematically, we also see that we did something with a half of a third. And so mathematically, we could solve this by taking 1 half times 1 third. We do that arithmetic, that's just 1 sixth of the brownies. So there we go, there's our answer. 1 sixth of the brownies have small uh, red hearts and white frosting on them. So again, our picture justified that this really is indeed solved by multiplying fractions. This next example at first glance is going to look identical to the previous example, but there's a slight difference and that slight difference is very important. So it says you are baking brownies for your class, you put white frosting on a third of the brownies, you then put small red hearts on a half of the brownies. What fraction of the brownies have both white frosting and small red hearts on them? Well, let's, let's draw a picture of what's going on here. So we start off with our same pan of brownies. It says we put white frosting on a third of them. So let's divide this up into three equal pieces. And we're going to put white frosting here again. So it's looking identical to the previous problem. But now it says you put small red hearts on a half of the brownies. And notice that it doesn't say that we put red hearts on half of the brownies with white frosting. It just says that we put small red hearts on a half of the brownies. Now there's several ways we could do this. Maybe one way is we take the whole pan, divide it up in half like this, and we put red hearts up here. That's a possibility. Um, another possibility is let's redraw our pan, and here's our white frosting. Uh, but now maybe we divide our pan in half like, like this. I'm just going to draw a big line, divide it in half like this. And then maybe we put our red hearts over here. Or maybe we put them over here. Uh, there, there's a lot of different possibilities. But the point here is that there's going to be different answers for every one of these possibilities. If we have this case right here, well, then we're going to have just this one piece here that has both white frosting and, um, and small red hearts. And so if this were the case, then, then our answer would be 1 sixth. Um, but if we have this case over here, we would see that no brownies would have both white frosting and small red hearts on them. So in this case, the answer would be zero. Um, uh, if we have this case over here, then we would see that this piece right here has both uh, white frosting and red hearts. And so in this case, the answer would be one third. So there's lots of different answers to it depending on what what half of the brownies we put um, we put small red hearts on. So we don't know which I don't know which one it is. Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? I don't know. So the final answer is that there's not enough information, not enough information to solve this problem. So again, it looks very very similar to that previous problem, but there's a slight difference. And that slight difference means that this problem is not solvable. Now, here's our last uh, problem, which again is going to look very similar to the previous two problems, but there's a slight difference. You're baking brownies for your class. You put white frosting on a third of the brownies. You then put small red hearts on a half of the brownies that have white frosting on them. How many brownies have both white frosting and small red hearts? So let's draw our picture here. We start off with the same pan of brownies. Uh, we put frosting on a third of them. So we're going to divide this up into three pieces. We're going to put white frosting right here. White frosting. And then we put small red hearts on a half of the brownies that have white frosting. So we'll take this white frosting, divide it up into two equal pieces, and we'll put red hearts up here. Okay. And uh, so we see that we've got here one piece of the whole pan that has white frosting and red hearts. But now look at the question. It says, how many brownies have both white frosting and small red hearts on them? Well, problem is, I don't know how many brownies are here in this one piece. 
There's lots of possibilities. I could have cut this pan up into a lot of small brownies, or maybe I had just a, a few large brownies. I don't know. But uh, I, I don't know how many brownies are in this one piece right here. So again, the answer is there's not enough information. So to kind of summarize the main points of these examples, number one, read the problem carefully. Don't just glance over it and write down an answer. Read every word very, very carefully and don't jump to any conclusions. Number two, draw a picture. We're going to draw lots of pictures here in, in this chapter and in the, in the next chapter. Always draw a picture to help justify uh, what uh, justify your solution. And then number three, if you think that you want to multiply fractions, make sure that you're really doing something with a fraction of a fraction. If you are doing something with a fraction of a fraction, then that means you're going to multiply fractions. If you're not doing something with a fraction of a fraction, then it's not multiplication of fractions. So that's it for this uh, lesson. Uh, there is no assignment before class.